Good morning. Um, it's great to be here and to be able to share some of the work that we're doing in the AR space. I don't know how many of you know of Luxotica, who we are. We're essentially an eyewear company. We're um, a leader in the design, the manufacturing, and the distribution of fashion, luxury, and sports and performance eyewear. We have brands um, that span from Ray-Ban and Oakley, amongst others, so some of the most recognizable names in the, in the sector. We make the analog products, done products, so to speak. Now, um, the vision of a company is to see the beauty of life. And we help see the beauty of life to, for our customers by empowering them to see um, the world around them and improve the perception that they have of the world around them. We do this through prescription eyewear, so corrective lenses that correct a vision defects, but we also do it through sunglasses that are specifically designed to work in uh, certain conditions. For example, if you're a golfer and you're immersed in a green space in nature, you might want to be able to discern the different color frequencies better, and we have filters that let you do that. So in a way, we are augmenting people's existing already or existence, and you could argue we are an analog company, sorry, an analog AR company in our DNA already, and we've been doing AR ever since we were born. Now, eyewear and the glasses category is widely seen as being at the very center of AR uptake, and it'll play a fundamental role for a very simple reason. It is head-worn by definition, it's wearable, and it touches on two senses that are fundamental and core to augmented reality. Vision for one, but also hearing with the um, temples going over the ear. As technology improves and as augmented reality continues on its growth trajectory, we remain interested in the sector from a product perspective. Our view is that where technology stands today, we're still somewhat far away from being able to miniaturize it and package it up in a product that we would feel worthy and happy of putting a branding on it, but it will come. AR to us, though, is not only about the product per se, it's about the experience. And we have a very strong belief that augmented reality for the experience can really transform the way in which customers buy products, shop for glasses, discover them, and experience them as a whole. And it's this latter area of augmented reality that I'd like to focus on um, and present to you our virtual try-on technology for shopping for glasses and for trying on eyewear. Now, why are we interested in virtual try-on? This slide is very simple, but it shows what the status of um, online penetration in eyewear is today, whereas pretty much everywhere around the world throughout the years, people have been progressively buying more and more online. We're at close to 15% today in the US of all the consumer goods being bought online. Apparel's already at 20. It's even higher in the UK and other markets. Eyewear is still stuck somewhere between 4 and 5%. It's actually lower for prescription eyewear. It's a little bit higher for sunglasses, but I'm, I'll show you agree there's a significant gap to where it could be. The reasons why eyewear penetration or on, online penetration for eyewear is what it is, it's really twofold. One is prescription glasses, at the end of the day, are a medical device. Um, as such, they need and require the attention of a medical practitioner throughout the process. You need to do an eye exam. You need to have somebody measure you out and take the right measurements so that the lenses are cut properly, and the product needs to be custom fit for you. Customers still prefer to go to a physical store where they interact with a physical human being rather than shopping online, which is possible, but it's not really happening that much. The second reason, and it's broader, and it doesn't just touch on prescription glasses, but it also explains why sunglasses aren't being sold more online, it really is to do with the facts of glasses really being something that's central to your identity. You have glasses on your face. Um, if you wear prescription glasses, you'll probably have them 16, 17, 18 hours a day. It is the first thing that people see when they meet you. It's something that can really define and make your, your identity and make or break a look as well. It is something, it's been scientifically proven that glasses can change the way in which people perceive you. They can even change the way in which you perceive yourself. So get the wrong glasses and it might negatively impact you. People want to be absolutely sure that they're getting the right product for them, and the way in which they can do it is really by trying it on, putting it on, seeing how they look in it, and really feeling comfortable that what they're choosing is the right product for them. So with that said, we embarked on a journey a while back, um, and we, we believe strongly in the growth of e-commerce, and we see a lot of potential for growth of e-commerce and eyewear. We want to drive growth in e-commerce. We embarked on a journey a couple of years back, um, looking out for how can we make um, 
growth accelerates in the e-commerce space for products, and virtual trial to us is one of the pieces of the puzzle that'll help spur more growth. So we brought a technology in-house. I'll go into a little bit more detail on the history of it, but I'd like to start by giving you a demo. And this is a, a, a live recording of what's happening um, on, a, on a website that's out, it's out there. It's the Raven.com website. So this product that I'm going to show you is live. It's available out there. You can actually try it for yourself if you'd like, but I'll show you the brief demo. So I'm on the product page of the Aviator, one of the best-selling SKUs. I scroll on it, the Try Them On button appears. I click on it, and this is where the experience begins. So I'll see how glasses look on my face. I get shown some instructions. I scroll. If I've read, if I've read them correctly and understand what I have to do, I'll be redirected to the camera app on my smartphone, and I'll start recording a video myself. Essentially, it's a video selfie. It's relatively simple and straightforward once I get the instructions correct, and after 15, 20 seconds or so, I should be done recording it. What happens is, once I'm, I'm done with it, I send the video over to um, the, the, the engine that runs in the cloud. Um, some pretty fancy computer vision stuff happens on, in the back end. We reconstruct a faithful representation of uh, your face, a 3D model, and we apply glasses on your face, which we serve back as a set of images that you can pan. This is the result. When I talk about VTO, people are like, well, this has been around for a while. It's not really news. And I'll, I have to agree with it. VTO has been around for a while but we haven't really seen it with this level of realism, with this level of scale, and with this ease of use, with this such wide assortments that we have today. So you go back to the website, now you're surfing in a totally different way for glasses. You can actually see what they look like. In this case, the Wayfarers have a chunkier temple, so you might want to swipe to see how they look on the side. And you might even want to start trying out new styles that you otherwise wouldn't have thought of trying on. So this is actually live. Um, and let me tell you a little bit more about where this technology comes from and what we're doing with it. I mentioned before, we're an eyewear company. We're not a software company, but we acquired this technology with a startup that already was selling glasses in 2014. For about two years, we did very, very little with it, partly to do with technological limitations of being able to make it widely available, partly because, like I said, we're not really a software company. Um, having said that, in 2016, we opened an office in San Francisco to be in the Silicon Valley, in the, in the heart of um, the tech ecosystem, to be closer to where everything's happening from an AR perspective and from a smart glasses and enhanced product perspective. And we saw an opportunity to really take this technology and wake it up from, from its, its sleeping form it was in and start making it fly. So we assembled a team of talented computer vision experts, software engineers, designers, and product managers in June last year. And in the space of four months, we had it live on our websites. It's protected by 20 patents. We fully own it and drive its development out of our office here. And it's something that we've gradually started putting on our different e-commerce sites, even though we haven't really communicated about it extensively. It's been by design. We want to learn, we want to see how customers interact with it, we want to see what sort of results we get, we want to test and learn and figure out, is this thing really working or is it seen as something gimmicky? And the results we've started seeing are pretty impressive. So despite no communication at all, we found that one in five users that gets to a product page for a pair of sunglasses or prescription glasses for that matter, actually decides to engage with it and clicks on the Try Them On button. Most of them get to the very end, and the ones that do use and engage with the technology, they end up spending significantly more time on the website itself. That's time that they spend trying out products. It's time they spend browsing for new products. It's time they spend discovering new SKUs that they otherwise wouldn't have known the existence of. And it's time they generally are spending with the brand and um, engaging with the brand. But most important of all, at the end of the day, we're a business and we want to increase and drive growth. It is generating revenue. Those users that are engaging with the technology are seeing the value of it, and they're really converting with more than twice the conversion rate we're seeing for users that do not use the VTO. So the, the big learning to us has been we acquired something in 2014, a while back. We didn't do a huge amount with it. It was something that everybody was enthusiastic at the time, but we didn't deliver any tangible business benefits for a while. We were able, in a relatively short space of time, 
to make it, um, make, it, make it available widely as a web app, and it's not just seen as something that customers like to engage for a, for a playful experience, but they also use it for shopping and for buying and for, for actually getting the product. So key learnings to us on what, does, what makes this experience um, what it is, and there are three things really. The first one being the most important one. I wrote there, make it real, but really the focus on here is it's called augmented reality. We often focus on the augmented side of things, but to us, the reality side of thing is equally, if not more important. The products that we make, they sit on your face, they can determine how you look and how you're perceived. They're beautiful products, they're works of art. And this is the only technology that we found that really does justice to the beauty of our products. It's able to portray our products in real life, it's very realistic and customers recognize that. So yes, augment, but don't forget that it's reality as well. Second one, maybe straightforward, and, and, and I'm stating the obvious here, but it doesn't, it doesn't harm, make it easy to use. When the technology first launched, um, it was sort of cumbersome to use and to get through to the very end, and we were losing customers throughout the acquisition process as they were trying to get the head captured. We've iterated a lot, and we've spent a lot of time researching um, what can we do to make the users go through the experience more seamlessly so that they can get to the end and experience it for themselves? We're happy to say that a significantly high portion of those users that attempt uh, visualizing their face with the glasses on now make it to the end and engage with the product. And the third is to make it current. And what I mean by that, it's, it's great to have it on there, but it needs, to be, it needs to be a living technology. It needs to be refreshed. It needs to be um, extended. We need to work on constantly. We need to add new 3D models that you can try on. Yesterday we had NVIDIA, I think, showcase some of the latest hardware that can handle in real time polygons that have, or 3D models that have 50 million polygons. The glasses that you try through a virtual trial technology um, are somewhat simpler. They're, I think, four orders of magnitude at least lower in terms of resolution, but they look incredibly real. Um, and that's the key point. And for us to be able to extract more value from it and for consumers to see it as valuable a tool, we need to make sure that we constantly create new models and we let them try as wide an assortment as possible. Um, we're investing heavily into digitizing our whole assortment. Uh, Luxottica manages some 20,000 SKUs in its assortment, if not even more. The Raven.com site alone has over 3,000 models that you can try on, or sorry, models that you can purchase. In terms of percentages of glasses that you can try on there, we're at about 60% coverage and we're growing. We've actually brought some people in as well with experience in the VFX and the Hollywood industries to ensure that the level of realism we're able to achieve is consistent with the beauty and the aesthetics of our products in real life. This is what we've done so far, but we've really only just scratched the surface. Um, AR to us, specifically in, uh, in this context here, we see it as being transformational in the way in which people buy. In our case, in which they the way in which they purchase our products. So today, it's something that's born out of a necessity or a desire to drive growth in online, but we see it as something not just limited on online. We want to drive growth um, in the, and bring it to the offline world as well. We see a strong use and application for it in our physical stores too. I don't know if any of you have been to a, an optical retailer recently or have been to a sunglasses store, but the process for buying glasses really hasn't changed much in the last 30 or 40 years. You're still very much faced with a wall of frames. You're either with some, somebody, a store associate, or somebody, an acquaintance, that might help you hone in towards something that looks good on you, that you'll feel comfortable with. But the truth is, if you were to go back in time to 30 years ago, it's not the difference, but the, maybe the models might have changed. And we see there a role for technology to help you discover frames, help you quickly see what looks good on you, what doesn't, maybe sift through the vast assortments that you have to be able to hone, on, hone in on the five or 10 or 20 frames that you might want to try on physically. Secondly, it's a try-on tool today, virtual try-on. We want to evolve and we will evolve and we are already working on it. We want it to become technology that knows what will look good on you based on who you are, what your characteristics are, um, maybe what your personality is as well, because that influences well what sort of frames customers go for. So we're turning this into a, a tool that will recommend and that will become a trusted advisor for a shopper shopping for glasses. And then finally, it's not only for standard product catalog as it is today, 
But really, this opens up for us as a company um, a whole new way of, of selling glasses, starting from custom, which we're already doing today. So if you go to the Ray-Ban site today, you can create your own custom-made Ray-Bans and assemble them from a set of predefined uh, components. The issue with that is, while it is working very well and customers are really buying it and enjoying it, the issue is that you're assembling a product that will go on your face, and there's no way of telling whether it'll look good until you've actually hit that purchase button and you've done the transaction and you've received the product in, the comp in your home. We'll put the virtual trial on much earlier on in the experience so that you'll be able to see whether what you're creating actually does look good on you and resonates with you, or maybe if you need to change some parameters to get to the right product for you. Um, this one's an obvious one, but the, the less obvious one is, while we do manage a lot of different SKUs, to date, everything we sell, we have first produced and we put it in our stores. With being able to show you what glasses look like, um, with a high level of realism like the one that we have, we will be able and we will start pre-selling glasses before we've even put them in production to be able to understand whether customers will actually be interested in the product that we're thinking of making or not. So we'll be able to do a Kickstarter-like selling of, of glasses. And to be honest, there's a lot more that we'll be able to do. But these are some of the three things that are our next immediate goals and that we've already started working on. So with that said, um, the thought I'd like to leave you with is that while we believe as a pretty big player in the eyewear industry that in a not too distant future you will be able to experience augmented reality through beautiful glasses, the truth is today with an application that has been around for some time that we really managed to able to leverage and, and take to a new level, you're already able to experience our beautiful glasses through augmented reality. Thank you very much.